Well, hello everybody, Matt Kleskowski here. And if you are an On One user, uh, you wanna pay attention to this video, there is an update to On One Photo Raw 2019. It's, uh, it's at 2019.5 now, okay? If you are a 2019 owner, this .5 update is free for you to upgrade. So if you got any questions about all that stuff, you're gonna to wanna to point it over to onone.com. Uh, as far as your account and downloading and what you get and all that stuff, you'll wanna make sure you visit your account over at onone.com. And um, there's of course gonna be a support section there if you, uh, if you have any questions on that stuff. I'd like to uh, take a few minutes here to show you what's new in this latest .5 update. So one of the first things is, is if you head up here to the window menu, there is now dual screen mode. Uh, you'll head over to Window Dual Mode Show. It's kind of hard to show two screens in a video here, but basically you'll see here I've got the uh, the original view over here, and then I've got this other view over here, which I can set into, say, grid view. Okay, I can even control the thumbnail size and all that. Um, I can then look at my photos, and I can I can put this window over onto one screen. And then what I can do is on this other screen here, I can say I wanna go into edit mode and start to edit the photo. So what you're gonna see is, is then you'll then have uh, the, the grid or the browser on one screen and your edit view on another screen, which could just make it easier for you to uh, go back and forth. And to turn it off, you just come back down here to dual mode, click on show and turn that one off. All right, let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's apply a couple of settings to this photo here. I'll do some contrast. I'll pull back on the highlights, open up the midtones a little bit. If you look up where your navigator is and your levels and your info and all that, you're now going to see a history panel up there. So you can see a history of everything that was done to it. And of course, you can step back through that history and see each step along the way. All right. So the history panel's new. It, it does... Non-destructive is not new. You've always been able to come down here and click reset to reset all of your settings. It's just you couldn't you couldn't backtrack through the settings that you had added in an easy way. So that's what's new in the history panel. You can obviously get back to your original, but you've really always been able to do that. It's just the addition of having all those history states there. Another thing that you'll see is under info, and let's really quick, let me hop into effects and let me add a filter to this. So I'll go ahead and... Uh, let me just add a quick sunshine filter, hop back over to develop, uh, maybe change the temperature a little bit. If you head over here to info, uh, you've of course got all of your camera information here, but you also see settings applied and you can click on that and you can see all the different settings that you've applied to this photo. So you can kind of get a quick overview of any develop or effects settings that you've done to it. All right, from there, you also have a, a brand new feature called Selective Sync. So let's head back over into Browse. And what you could wanna do with this is, essentially, you know, let's say I've got some settings that I have for one photo, and I think they would work good for another photo, all right? But maybe I don't wanna do everything. So in this case here, we could take this photo, I could go in here to uh, do all my develop changes, and I can go in here and do some effects, and I could add a filter, like let's say a black and white filter. I'm gonna head back over to browse. So I've done some things to this photo and I might want to copy them over to another photo that's similar, okay? So if you just come up here to your settings, you can go down here to copy settings. Of course, there's keyboard shortcuts you should probably get to know for that stuff. Copy the settings and then I can go click on another photo and then come up here and I can choose paste settings. When I do that, it's gonna ask me what exactly do I wanna paste, right? And I can go through here and turn off different things. So as an example, I've got my develop, uh, let's say under effects, uh, I've got any effects settings that I've had inside of there. So maybe, maybe I want to paste everything, but I don't want to paste the crop and leveling that I've done to the photo. Or I don't want to paste certain effects or certain develop changes to it. Uh, you've got more control inside of there to, uh, to go through and decide what you want to copy and paste and sync between photos. Uh, if you are a keyword user, which I am not, um, I, I'm not a real big fan of keywords. They just take too much time for me. If you are a keyword user, though, you can go in here as you uh, as you start to create new keywords. So if I were to add a keyword, you'll see I have the option to nest it inside of another keyword. And then if it's already uh, pre-created keywords, like I've already done some keywording here, and you want to change that nesting, all you have to do is drag and drop. And you'll see you can start to nest keywords inside of other keyword sections inside of there. 
okay? And if you want it taken out, all you gotta do is just take it out and just kind of drag it so it's, uh, you'll notice it's a box, all right? It's gonna be a box when you're gonna drag it into something and then you'll notice a solid line basically takes it out of there. It's not gonna drag it into a certain keyword hierarchy. Uh, that solid, that just single solid line just means it's gonna take it out of whatever hierarchy that it was in. Also, I wanted to take a quick moment from our sponsor, which if you haven't figured out by this point, is uh, generally always gonna be me. <laughs> and, and let you know, if you're watching this video, then the chances are you have purchased one of my on one courses before. Um, and so I, I like to do these updates to just let you know what's new inside the newest versions. Uh, that way, you know, you're not buying a whole new course just for a few new features. That said, if you haven't uh, checked out the On One Essential Guide to Editing Landscapes, I released this one um, at the end of 2018, right when On One 2019 first came out. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that it is still out there, still very applicable to 2019.5. In fact, I'm gonna put a $20 coupon uh, code on the screen here for you. I know a popular question will be, you know, what, is the course updated for 2019.5? And the answer is yes, but I actually didn't have to update the course because all of the .5 updates are more organizational and in the browse module, there are no editing updates. So since this was strictly an editing course, there, there would be no updates to the actual course. So it still works just fine for whatever version of On1 2019 that you have, okay? Let's jump back into the new features. Another one, and it's it's not getting it's not getting a lot of uh, a lot of play. It was actually listed on on one site in kind of some additional features, but I actually think it's a pretty big feature, which is the ability to come up here to the file menu and do new canvas, which basically lets you create a blank document. And where this comes in handy is if you were going to create some type of a collage of some sort. It was really difficult to do in, in On1 2019. Essentially, you really couldn't combine three photos together. We have in the, the edit section here, if I jump over to edit, we have the ability to add layers and I could bring in three different photos, but I was basically stuck with my canvas size. And let's say I wanted to make, you know, maybe a poster or a card. Well, I couldn't just start from scratch with a blank canvas and start adding things to it. Now you can do that. Okay, now you can come up here and just click on new canvas, make it whatever size that you want, and then go in there and start bringing in various layers and photos and whatnot to it. So I actually think it's a pretty big enhancement, but um, it didn't get a whole lot of play on the On One website. I just, again, if you're if you're creating collages and cards and posters and things like that, I think it's uh, it's something that you'll want to take a look at. All right, moving on down the line. So we've kind of gone through the big features that they've added to this. Uh, some of the smaller features, again, if you go to On One's website, you'll kind of see these as as the extra stuff. Um, I again, and I'm, I'm going to say it's a. They say it's a small feature. I I think it could actually be a pretty big feature for people. We'll head over back to browse. And when you're back over in browse, and you go over here to your filters section. Um, one of the things you can do is you can search and you, you, you got this little advanced section that was kind of hidden down here at the bottom. If I open up advanced and I can match all criteria, there's a little drop down here. We can search based on aperture, author, camera, all these different things that we've really been able to do quite a bit. But there's also another one in here where it's settings and I can search based on certain settings that have been applied to the photo. Now, your organization system has probably gone pretty bad if you're resorting to this because um, if you're like, man, I can't find the photo anywhere, but I know I added a sunshine effect to it or I know I added a certain effect to it. Uh, you could go through here and you can search for those things. Well, I, I can actually, I'm kind of poking a little bit fun, but I can actually see myself using this because it's, uh, you know, there are times where I forget what I do to certain things and uh, I, I forget where a photo is, but I'll often remember a certain setting that I've applied to that photo, that could be a, uh, a quick way to go find it. All right, uh, amongst the other little features that they'll uh, kind of threw in there, uh, another one is under the type tool. So let's take, a, uh, let's take a photo over here into edit mode and let's go grab our text tool. And I'll just type some text. All right, so you've got your text up here. Uh, you've got your normal font settings and all this stuff up at the, the top there, but if you notice, there's a, a little icon over here, 
No, let's go click on that again. There's a little icon over here. If you click on it, it opens up some, some I think, pretty important settings like character spacing, uh, which is essential if you're going to make your text look good, uh, line spacing, text opacity, and then color fill, which actually lets you put a background color behind the text. All right, so if you wanted to make a text box, and you can, of course, come over here and resize that box. Okay, but you can go in there and you can change the color fill of the text. So uh, you're not just stuck with that text on a the background of the photo. If you wanted it to maybe, you know, a, a practical use for this would be is if you wanted to maybe put something down across the bottom of the photo. I'm not quite sure I would use red. <laughs> Call me crazy. I'm not quite sure I would use red, but if you wanted to use black or some form of uh, some form of a grayish color here, maybe a light gray dark gray, uh, that could be a use for that. Okay. If you wanted to just put some text, could be, could be your name, could be a message, could be a little story about the photo, whatever could be settings. If you're going to share this online, whatever it happens to be, uh, you now have the ability to put a background color behind there. And uh, finally, I'll just run through a couple of uh, uh, things that I won't necessarily demonstrate here. Better Apple's photos, Apple photos integration. If you're using Apple photos, uh, tool tips, better tool tips. So tool tips are generally things where you hover over and it tells you what it does. Uh, there's better tool tips throughout the application. There is a better first launch experience for those of you that are just launching for the first time. And of course the obligatory performance increase, performance improvements and camera upgrades. If you want to see exactly what those camera upgrades are and when I say camera upgrades, I mean, uh, so camera support is really what I should say support for newer cameras. If you want to see those, then obviously head over to the on one website and you can get a full list of their cameras. If you're not sure where to go, the fastest thing you can do is just Google on one photo raw 2019 camera support, and that'll take you exactly to which cameras are supported. Okay. So uh, again, just head over to on1.com if you've got questions on the downloads and all of that stuff, they can help you over there. Thanks so much for watching. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, if you are interested, check out the, uh, the On One Essential Guide to Editing Landscapes. You can find it at mattk.com slash on one landscape. And don't forget the $20 coupon code. Save yourself a little bit of money. Thanks so much for watching, folks. I'll talk to you again real soon.